this video we're going to be focused on the question why did the plant works come to Doncaster and essentially revolves around the images below we're going to look at the historical context we're going to be looking at the role of pivotal figures like Sir Edmund Denison we're going to look at the geographical location of Doncaster and we're going to look at other key factors as well so just to reaffirm that key point let's zoom in on the specific factors so the Doncaster Plant Works came to Doncaster because of its geographical position. We're going to zoom in and look at how its geographical position helped to establish the site at Doncaster. We already know that the availability of coal within its area helped. We've already established that the role of Sir Edmund Denison was pivotal. But sometimes what gets uh, missed by many people is that it is because So, the wider historical context, um, beginning with the Industrial Revolution, um, we can see that Britain was seen as the workshop of the world. Britain was the first country to industrialise um, and they experienced technological changes never seen before. And we know that even the landscape was changing with factories and large chimneys, etc. Um, we've talked about before how the mass migration from countrysides into the towns and cities. And essentially steam power was changing the world. Now, Doncaster became a prime location for that. And we're going to look into the different details with regards to its location shortly. But essentially, we're focusing on how railways were changing the world. And it was due to this rapid expansion that was taking place, this rapid expansion there, um, that explains um, why it came to Doncaster in the first place. Because essentially, rail development was expanding across the country um, and Doncaster was going to take advantage of that development. So this period can be described as a period of transformational change, an era of rapid development in technology um, and an era of rapid development with regards to railways. Now a problem to highlight um, the limitations of the railway network in the beginning of the 19th century is the, is the journey between York and London. Now, it was long and arduous because you needed to get three different trains, one from York to Derby, Derby to Rugby, and then Rugby to London. And we can highlight that by zooming in on this map here. So here we've got York, and there we've got London. And in order to get to London, if you were an entrepreneur or a businessman, you would have to get one train and that would go to Derby there. You then have to get a second train to Rugby, as mentioned. And then from Rugby, you would then get a train to London. Now, that wasn't very good for trade. It wasn't good for business. So um, the railway companies and the government at the time, they wanted to create a new great northern railway from york to london that would boost business so going back to our map the the great northern railway would start in york you can see there's doncaster going all the way through down to london so essentially um, doncaster was on the route between york and london and this is a key reason that will explain why the Doncaster Plant Works came to Doncaster. But it needs to be said that this wasn't about improving people's lives. Essentially, this was economically driven. This Great Northern Railway was economically driven in order to improve chances of trade, business and commerce. Another really important reason that explains why the Plant Works came to Doncaster was because of the role of Sir Edmund Denison. Now, Edmund, Sir Edmund Denison can be described as the pivotal factor in explaining why the site came to Doncaster. And it revolved around um, a couple of, um, couple of roles that he had. So it needs to be said that he was actually the chairman of the Great Northern Railway Company. This was a company who laid the new railway tracks. It was a company of massive influence. And he, in Parliament, he campaigned for a new railway between York and London. Now, because, as we've already highlighted, Doncaster is on the route, he argued he was the one who, through great determination, was able to persuade the government that Doncaster would be the location for the plant works because of its geographical positioning. It was on the line itself. 
But in addition to that, he also argued that Doncaster would be the place because Doncaster actually lies on rich coal seams that would make it an ideal location because steam power obviously needs coal. So because of the role of Sir Edmund Denison, add that with the geographical positioning and add that with the fact that it was on rich coal seams, now helps us to better understand why the site came to Doncaster in the first place. So let's have a look at the geographical position and again we can see that if we zoom in on the map of Britain so we've got York there, we've got London here, we've got Doncaster there and the Great Northern Railway we can see going through the country passing through Doncaster. Now a previous site that had been used was actually Boston. Now that was a suggestion that the Boston plant works would continue but as we could see that would be pointless because at some point the trains would have to come off and would have to go the 150 miles off the line and to Boston itself. Therefore it made perfect sense for Doncaster to be part of the plant works. And then we've got the site itself the G and we can see here from satellite imagery um, we can see that there is the River Don flowing through it so therefore it had um, it needed running water um, for the site itself and also we can see that it's positioned um, the site we know that this this bit here was demolished we've got Wabtec here about a third of it that's left but then we've also got um, if we can just highlight it here we've also got the railway line so it was positioned right by to the railway line itself the plant works and then a final part that i want to just highlight is the fact that doncaster had rich coal seams all around it now the different red uh, locations here represent the different mines so we can see all the different areas around doncaster um, highlighting the fact um, that doncaster had rich coal seams around it to support um, the effort so we've looked at many of the different aspects there um, and ultimately the plant works was built in 1853. And we just need to recap some of those um, different reasons. So remember it was due to the pivotal role of Sir Edmund Denison. Remember how he was the chairman of the Great Northern Railway and he was able to persuade Parliament um, that the work should go there instead of Boston because it was on the line. Um, and we've also explained how it was Doncaster's geographical position, that it was in between York and, Don uh, and London. Don't forget this was economically driven, and it was economically driven because it was about improving trade, it was about improving business, not social conditions. A further point to explain why it came to Doncaster was because of the availability of coal. Doncaster was surrounded by rich seams of coal, actually the type of coal um, that worked extremely well for steam engines. It burnt very, very well. And ultimately, this is a very important part in explaining why it came to Doncaster, that it all took place within the context of the Industrial Revolution, during an era where there was rapid um, expansion of railways in the country. And it was this rapid expansion of railways that helps to explain that the environment and the context was right in which to bring the works to Doncaster.